Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to our first webinar of November. I am uh, Lisa. I'll be your host for today, and I'll be making sure that everything works fine, and more importantly, ensure that all of your questions will get answered. Um, for our webinar regulars, it's great to have you back. And for those of you joining us for the first time, a very warm well welcome to you. Um, we really hope that today's presentation is going to be full of tips and, and good insights. And hopefully um, you will all um, find it very, very interesting. Um, it's going to be about how to run efficient board meeting using digital um, and saving time and money along the way. Before I hand over to our um, speaker today, Bob, uh, a couple of house rules. We'll be hosting a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So you can submit your questions throughout the webinar. Um, you need to click on the Q&A button. Um, it's either at the top or at the bottom of your screen, depending on your device. We'll collect all the questions at the end and we'll answer them. So please feel free to do that at any time. You are also able to vote for your favorite questions there. Um, give a bit of uh, a thumbs up. Um, we'll also have polls um, for you to take part in throughout the presentation. So for those of you who are joining us via the app, you will see the poll appear and then you can select your answer and, and, uh, and be done for that. If you are joining us from your web browser, you won't be able to see or answer the poll because the function does not appear in this mode. However, don't worry, the questions and the answering options will appear on the presentation slides. Um, we also, you know, tell them out loud um, so you can share your answers in the chat section. So the chat section is where you can, well, chat amongst yourselves, share your ideas, tips, thoughts with everybody. We always love seeing our audience sharing um, everything. So please feel free to, to use the, the chat section throughout the presentation. Um, and for those of you who have the, the, the web browser um, answer there as well. If you have any problem throughout the webinar just drop us a line um, to all panelists and we'll be able to help the session is being recorded uh, so we'll share the session recordings with everybody uh, within the next few days probably next week and now without further ado let me hand over to bob for um, the presentation today thank you bob Lovely. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, a lovely introduction. Thank you. Um, so, yes, um, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us this afternoon for this webinar on how to make remote board meetings more efficient. Um, we find that when we speak to people, the feedback we receive, not only from charities, but from all organisations, is that they need to improve the process for their board leadership meetings. And they're not sure how this can be achieved. So we're running short promotional videos like this to help people in the situation to understand how they can improve their processes. So as Lisa said, um, I'm your speaker this afternoon. I'm known to everyone as Bob. I'm, I'm never called Robert. Um, I'm the manager of customer success services and I head the team of customer success managers at Onboard. I have a background in customer service and I believe in achieving customer service um, expectations in the service they receive and also the support that is given. And it's really great to see you all putting in where you're, you're actually watching this webinar from today. So just so that you know, I'm based in Norwich in Norfolk. Uh, so that's where we're coming from this afternoon. So the agenda for this afternoon will cover three areas. How digitalization can improve your meetings remotely and face-to-face. -face. How you can have control of your documents and allow access to only those that need it. And security in knowing that your data is secure, the knowledge that you know it is secure. And as Lisa said, time permitting, we'll have questions and answers. Um, hopefully I'll be able to answer all your questions. Um, so if you can send them through, that would be great. Before we start, um, I'd like to share with you the results from a survey that was recently conducted. 
The survey was completed by a wide range of um, board members and board leaders. And the survey asked questions about their current non-digitalized process and included questions on the efficiency of their current method of distribution of board papers, how easy it is to access supplementary meeting materials and organization documentation, as well as how secure they think their data is. As you can see the results on the screen, over half of the respondents indicated that improvements could be made. This indicates that action needs to be taken sooner rather than later. So we would like to run, as Lisa said, some polls with you this afternoon to see if your answers mirror those that from that recent survey. So to start with, I would like to ask you, looking at your current process for the distribution of your meeting papers, which could be supplying your board members with a printed and bound meeting pack. Um, you may be sending a PDF via email, or you could even be using a shared drive. How would you consider your current process to be good? Or would you say it needs improvement? If you could answer the poll now, please. you a couple of moments to think about that. <clears throat> okay, hopefully that's given you all time to answer that poll. So I'll move on to the next slide. And we're going to discuss pre-digitalization meeting process. Um, so this may be the process that you are currently using, or it may be a similar process to that what you're currently doing. So um, papers are received by the meeting administrator, and they normally come from a number of different sources. The papers are then pulled together into a meeting pack, and this often or not needs the skill of the meeting administrator to be able to put this together, because they need to check the formatting of the papers. Um, I don't want to point the finger at any one department, but I do find that um, finance departments are able to produce the most wonderful spreadsheets. Um, however, they're never formatted correctly to enable easy distribution within a board pack. So um, in addition to that, the administrator may also need to create more than one version of the pack to take into account conflicts of interest that may have been arisen and also confidential information that some attendees are not permitted to see. Then you have to distribute your papers to the meeting attendees. This can sometimes be a complete nightmare. Sometimes we're courier packs, sometimes we're emailing packs. And if it's an email pack and it's a large PDF, sometimes that results in more than one email needing to be sent to each attendee. And then you have the issue of, did they actually see that second email with the second part attachment? I know from my background, it's firsthand that it's the distribution of meeting papers that is a priority and sometimes causes the most headaches. You need to ensure that your board and your leadership um, members receive the papers in time to enable them to properly prepare. And then what happens about papers or a late paper or a paper that's been amended? Does your current process mean that your administrator needs to start the full process over again by completing packs and distributing them? Or do you send out a separate sheet with the updated uh, paper? Again, hoping that your board member has seen that and has slotted it into the correct um, place for that agenda. And then let's just think and stop about the security. After you have sent your papers out, you've shared your papers, how much security do you have over your content? How do you control who's actually seeing what your meeting papers are? I'm quite confident in saying that you probably don't have any control over where the papers are being stored or who's actually looking at them. No organisation wants media attention because confidential or commercially sensitive information has been misplaced. And if you're using a process similar to this, it could happen. Factors such as missed papers, late delivery of papers, or amended papers being um, lately delivered or missed, all contribute to an unproductive meeting. 
So, okay, I'm hoping that the results of the first poll are in. Oops, and let's see if we can have the results up. So the question was, how would you describe the distribution of papers to board members before the meeting? Right, okay, so we've got 37% uh, of us are saying good and 63% of us are saying needs improvement. Um, many board leaders have said to us that this process does need to be improved and they have concerned that the board members are receiving papers that are outdated and not having time to uh, prepare for meetings because of the process. The result is the agenda section that has been missed or it's not being constructive because you're having to go over the papers that have been missed to explain the changes. And then th this means that your time is taken away from being uh, a strategic meeting into a decision that really needs to just turn into a management meeting to explain the papers. So 63% needs improving, 37% saying good. Okay, gonna move on now. Thank you for completing that. We will have a, another poll shortly. Um, so just why my screen doesn't want to move. Let's, there we go. So the realization that you um, could improve your process, it's not always easy looking at the process from the inside, trying to see if you can find improvements. Sometimes the processes that have been in place for a while, you can't see how can they, they can be improved. And you may not also be aware that there is actually a solution out there that could improve your process. And there are some cases, and I've spoken to some people who have said, well, we've always done it like this. Why do we need to change? We need to change because we are currently in unprecedented times. Change is being forced upon us sociably, sociably and through work-wise at all times. New guidelines and new restrictions are being introduced. And there's no better time to look at improving your process to be able to future-proof your organisation. We all want to ensure that we can continue to run our organisations in a situation such as this. I'll try and get my screen to move. It doesn't seem as if it wants to move. Here we go. So how do you evaluate your needs to digitalise? So board portals, they now outweigh the past practice of manually creating board packs. Printing, collating and assembling board packs in preparation of your meeting is expensive and it's not good for the environment. Not only will a board portal save you time and money, they offer better security and are easier to use than those large clumbersome paper packs that we currently use. What do you need to look for? You need to look for a solution that does what you want. You want it to have the flexibility for you to be able to add features and to grow with you as you grow, as your organisation grow. You need a solution that gives the administrator the tools they need to easily create an effective agenda and to be able to upload the documents in a no fuss process. The solution also needs to be easy for your board members to use and the functionality for them to be able to effectively prepare for your meetings. This means that it should be available on all platforms and it should also be available offline. When you're evaluating your needs, cost is a consideration. Cost always comes into evaluations. Don't just look at how much the solution is. You need to take into consideration the potential savings that you could make by having a board portal you need to look at the time it takes your board administrator to currently prepare your board meeting packs. You need to look at the material costs as well as the distribution costs. And then you also need to take into account how many times you have to send late papers or papers that have been updated. Do you then post them? Do you then courier them? Do you then email them? This is all costs you need to take into consideration. A big thing on everybody's minds is security. You need to look at the level of security that's provided, such as encryption, access levels. This is who can see what and can you stop people from seeing certain things. And also think that a board member may lose or have their device stolen. And can you ensure that the data on that device is not accessible? 
and can you ensure that it's been wiped? You also need to consider support, something that's close to my heart. What levels of customer support are offered to not only the administrator, but to your board and leadership meeting members? Will you have a dedicated support person who's available to be um, uh, available, sorry, to be um, uh, at the end of the phone for your administrators and your board members? So that's me over with the evaluation of your um, board portal. We asked you to have a look at um, the format of your meeting. So I'm now going to run another poll if that's okay. So it's your turn to take part again. So looking at your current process, how would you describe your meeting format? Would you describe this to be good or needs improvement? If you could answer now, please. All right, um, hopefully that's given you all enough time to be able to click good or needs improvement. And uh, we'll now move on to the next slide. It's, come on, come on, there we go. So post digitalization outcomes. How can a portal change your process? Uh, this is very easy. It's going to make the process of creating a meeting pack so much easier because Onboard allows you to upload papers in their original format. You eliminate the lengthy process of checking document layouts. You eliminate the need to convert to PDF. You eliminate the need to combining into one meeting pack. And the costly process of, per of printing and binding your packs has gone. The pack distribution, this is done at the touch of a button to all the meeting attendees at the same time. So you know that your board members have time to prepare. No more currying costs. So that's another expense eliminated. When you appear, sorry, when a paper has arrived late or needs to be changed, the update is completed in minutes. The control of your papers will never be easier as you set the access level at the meeting and you also have the ability to restrict access at agenda levels, ensuring that only the eyes on your data are the ones that you have given permission to view. An informed board and well-prepared board results in improved meeting formats. It's proven that if your board are given time to prepare and have the correct information at hand, your meeting formats will be improved. So let's see what you said about your meeting formats. So let's move on to the results of the second poll. Okay, surprisingly, the results are 36% good and 64% needs improvement. Um, I was hoping that possibly it would have been more of a 50-50% split. So the people who say their, their um, meeting format needs improvement, can you pinpoint the problem with your meeting formats? Um, do you have communication with your chair regarding the agenda sequence? Is that the problem? The sequence is not correct. Does your chair receive updates relating to the meeting in time for them to possibly change the format of your meeting so that it runs more smoothly? And also, are you making decisions in meetings that could be easily made before the meeting has taken place? And you're just putting it on the agenda for ratification process. All of that would improve your meeting format, constant communication, the availability to have um, um, access to your meeting documents will always improve the format of your meeting. It's always good to have a chat with the chair as well to say, do you think we can improve the format of our meeting? And just ask what they think and ask your board members, carry out a survey. At the end of your meeting, you could carry out a, a survey to say, was that meeting strategic? Was it managerial? How did you think the format went? Do we need to improve the format? Always ask. If you never ask, you never find out. Now gonna move on to document storage. So, um, unlimited storage of your documents may not sound exciting, but having the ability to publish uh, to your board members all the information they need to enable them to make informed decisions is revolutionary. 
you can have them um, have the access to documents to allow them to look at your annual reports, your policies, to be able to view meetings from previous minutes, to be able to look at complex um, spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, and all of this information is available to them all the time, and they will allow them to lead your charity in the most effective way possible. You have unlimited document storage on, um, on board. So this means just by touching your screen, whether you're online or more importantly nowadays as well, if you're offline, will take you to the document library containing all the information they need. You can say goodbye to those massive dust gathering lever arch files that you'd normally need a trolley to take to uh, a meeting with. You don't need them anymore. And then you've also, you can say goodbye to the laborious task of sending out updates to your policies one page at a time, asking your board members to update their files. And do we know if they actually update their files? We may look at them and find that the updates have never been done. So again, they haven't got access to up-to-date data and up-to-date information. So we're gonna run another quick poll. And this poll is gonna be, how would you describe the storage and access to your board meeting materials? So looking at your current um, process that you do, would you consider that your access for your board members to their meeting materials, uh, supplementary meeting materials and, and your um, organization materials is good or would you say it needs improvement? So if you could answer that poll now, please. And uh, I'm not going to hedge bets, but I'm just wondering whether this will come out again. Needs improvement. Um, it's quite interesting. Okay. Well, hopefully that was given everybody enough time to be able to answer that. So um, I'm going to move on now to our next slide. And we're just going to go over um, security. So I touched on security earlier when we talked about the pre-digitalization process. So all boards have information in their packs that is confidential and sometimes sensitive. So Onboard offers the gold standard in cloud security. We partner with Microsoft Azure. This means nothing short of the most secure industry leading measures are made available to you. The granular permissions model means information will only be accessible to the individuals who have been granted the appropriate permissions. Accessing the um, um, information on your organization using the latest biometric security eliminates the need for us all to have little black books of passwords. And you don't need to worry about papers getting into the wrong hands. With onboard um, remote wipe technology, if your board member loses or has a device stolen, the data can be removed remotely, ensuring that all your information is safe. Okay, so it, it's pull time again. Um, so I'm going to quickly ask you again. Um, for the last time, can you answer, please, good or needs improvement to how would you rate the security of your board's data? If you could answer now, please. Okay. I think we've all got the gist of the polls now, so I think we can possibly move on. Now let's select my other slide. There we go. So transferring your board to be ding being digital today does not need to be expensive and it does not need to be a painful experience. So this afternoon, we've only covered a few of the features that are available on Onboard. With today's, today's cloud-based technology, all you need to empower your board members can be kept in their pocket. We offer a deep dive demonstration every Wednesday and you're available to book these via the um, Passageways website, the deep dive demos will give you a more insight into the full functionality that is available to you using a cloud-based portal such as Onboard. Okay, so let's move on to the pull results. So the third question, the third question I asked was, how would you describe the storage and access to your board meeting materials? Okay. So yeah, I uh, can see again, so we've got 66% needs improvement and 34% saying good. 
needs improvement. Is this because you've not given enough access to the information of other documents? Have you not thought about um, giving them a binder every time with the additional information in? Or do you not just not make it available to them? Onboard allows you to publish all this information, which allows them to look back over meetings to then make informed decisions going forward. Um, the ones that are saying good, that's encouraging. That means they're forward thinking. They've thought that they um, need to give their board access to additional information for them to make informed decisions. Members um, also need to be informed of policy changes to ensure that they are up to date with everything that's happening within your organisation. And the fourth question I asked was, how would you rate the security of your board data? And if we could have the results of that, please. OK, so again, we've got 63% saying needs improvement and 38% saying good. Um, 38% saying good. That's reassuring to see that you've thought about your data. You've thought about the issues that could arise if it gets into the wrong hands. Um, so that, that's good to see. 63%, uh, perhaps you need to think straight away and, and action straight away if you're saying it needs improvement. Um, it's very easy to find out how many times confidential data has been left behind or, or by mistake and somebody's been found. Um, you can Google it really quickly. I Googled it and I came up with a couple of answers. And one of them says, in, in 2014, a royal bodyguard left top secret documents on a BA transatlantic flight. Um, none of us want to have them sort of documents found. And also a recent civil servant was fined after he left a seven page report, which was marked top secret containing information relating to security matters on a train. And when he was questioned, he said he felt physically sick. You don't have to put yourself in that situation. You don't have to have your name all over the media because of a mistake that happened. You say it needs improvement. Let's get it improved now. So thank you very much for completing those polls. That, that, was, that was great. I appreciate your um, participation in that. So moving on, you, you've heard me talk about Onboard. Um, don't just take my word for it. Um, Age UK, Isle of Wight, they've been using Onboard now for over a year. Uh, we asked Amy, who's the company secretary and the assistant to the CEO, if she could, without thinking too hard, would she be able to supply us with a, a list of six improvements she noticed following the rollout of Onboard to their trustees? And she listed these. She's put more timely and secure production of meeting papers, improved good govern governance, improved quality control, no more paper copies, access to the latest information. And I think one which is really good is trustees confidence boosted. That's great to see that she's listed that. Amy also went on to say, a fantastic way to streamline the administrative process of producing meeting papers, makes board meetings run more smoothly rather than board members getting lost in the emails, files or paper packs, and peace of mind that sensitive information is um, in control in one place. Security and quality control is paramount to us. So we'd be more than happy to put you in touch with Amy so you can have a chat with her firsthand on how onboarders improve their process. Or you can also go and have a look on Captera, um, which is a review center and they are full of reviews from our current customers who use onboard. So it's time for questions and answers. So um, Lisa. Hello again. Hello. <laughs> uh, I hope that was OK. And, and, and let's hope we've had some questions come through. I haven't been watching because uh, it puts me off. So I'm going to put it over to you. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Thanks very much for, uh, uh, for, for your time, Bob, and for, for a very uh, insightful uh, uh, presentation. We have uh, already quite a, a few questions coming in. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll start straight in. Uh, one question, yes, what are the license costs associated with, with Onboard? Do you, do you have a bit more okay. details around that? 
with regards to cost, I'm sorry, I'm not going to put my video on, Lisa. I'll just explain oh, that. I've, oh, I've yeah. got people working from home as well, and I'm a bit concerned if I use the bandwidth on video, video will oh, lose yeah. everyone. So I'm yes, that. yeah, yeah, completely um, understand. So That's absolutely fine. The costs of onboard, it's, um, it's, there are costs and it relates into what you would like your solution to do for you. There are different suites that are available to use on onboard. And we would tend to say, if you'd like um, to find out the costs, just make a quick call to us, tell us what you'd like onboard to do, how many people you would like um, to use it. And then we'd, we'd be able to give you a firm costing rather than me saying today, well, it's this or it's that, and I get it completely wrong. As I said at the beginning, I'm customer support. I'm not sales, so I'd rather not say anything on that side, if that's okay. Yeah, that, that's absolutely fine. Um, and and yes, and actually we have um, quite a few questions coming in. Um, the the other one that that's coming is it's about training. Um, what yep. training would you would you recommend to get boards up to speed with with going virtual? Because sometimes you have you know trustees that are a bit um, afraid yeah we have trustees on boards that are all different ages some of us mm -hmm. are very techno savvy some of us are no get that get that ipad away from me i don't want to touch it um on board is a very very easy system to use um uh, as an organization we believe in supporting our end users as much as we can we offer um Full training. We offer one-to-one -one training to trustees and also to administrators to get them using it. We offer group training where we will, pre-COVID and hopefully post-COVID, we will actually come to a board meeting and be able to train you in advance of the board meeting and to be there to answer any questions. And we are available ongoing all the way through to your end users and your administrators. You have a direct telephone number to contact your customer success manager who you will speak to who can 99% of the time resolve any training issues for you. Great. That's, that's very interesting. Thank you, Robert. Um, the next question is, is about security. And I know you, you touched uh, upon it uh, a, a little bit. How, how would we know if, if our security is good or needs improvement? Um, do you have a checklist or are there, do you recommend resources that, that people can uh, check against? Um, there is a security um, information on our website with regards to what security you should be looking for in a portal. Um, I can only advise you on portal security as I'm not aware of how you're currently distributing your papers. There are ways that emails can be hacked, um, they can be intercepted. Um, and again, with uh, different distributions, if you're di distributing your, your papers and your information via uh, a courier service or post, you've got the issue of that could be intercepted, that could be stolen, it could be lost. So security is a full feature. You need to look at every single way that you are distributing and using your papers and consider the security from step one. Um, like I said, with um, data in transit, that's the distribution. You need to look at data at rest as well. If you're doing um, emails, where is that PDF being stored? Is it being stored in a secure area? As a charity and you issue papers to your board, do you give them a, a secure box for them to be able to lock those papers in? If not, they could be left anywhere. They could be left on a dining table and somebody could pick them up and walk away. So security encompasses everything. And again, that's a discussion we could have with you if you want to consider going digital. We'd say, look at all your security and assist you with that. Mm -hmm. Got you. Yes, yeah, yeah. And it's it's very important now that um, you know everybody is accessing um, you know remotely, even even when they're working. So mm -hmm. so the the secure use of data is 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 of um, utmost importance. Um, another question we have um, from um, somebody from from the attendance. Uh, Somebody finding it hard to get their board to accept going um, virtual, um, even in a time like this. Uh, how long would you say this process lasts? Uh, what the process, um, so I take it that means the process of getting people to go virtual. Um, right, okay. Yeah. It's, it's quite a quick process, to be honest with you. Um, this is quite a hard one to answer because <laughs> if, uh, why are they finding it hard to get people to go virtual? Um, everything's virtual. Um, we can't meet in the same room at the moment. So how are they attending their board meetings? Mm 
Demetrius. Are they attending their board meetings? Um, uh, if they're not having meetings, then really, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you should be saying to your board members, look, we need to carry on getting this charity running. We cannot not meet. We have to do it virtual. Um, I would say to you that the process, the process to um, implement an organisation going virtual from an administrator point of view, getting things up and running can be done within 48 hours. It can mm -hmm. be really quick. The uh, adoption of your board into using the process, I would say you need to possibly allow two full meetings for them to really see the benefit of going virtual and for us to assist them going virtual as well. They may not want to go virtual because they're frightened of the, the hardware and the software mm -hmm. because they're not just sure how to use it then it's just a phone call. If they can use a mobile phone, we'll speak to them via the phone and instruct them and show them how easy it is to do. So I would say 48 hours for the admins. And if you have monthly meetings, two months to get everybody adopted maximum. Mm -hmm. Got you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and uh, yeah, like you said, it, it quite nicely fits in with the whole organizational buy-in um as well yes. how how do you create that conversation um mm. internally and, and and make sure that people understand why it's important uh yeah. and and totally buy-in we have a a, a few uh, resources around that too uh, on the website for for people who like to check mm. and like to start conversations you've got the option as well of um if you're saying that you're finding your board they find hard to go virtual have a trial say to them look let's trial this let's show you how easy it is to do this and then you can have a free trial of onboard we'll set it up free of charge you can use it for your board meetings you've got the full security available to you even on a trial we can't even access what you're putting on the trial and then you can show them firsthand look it's really easy we've got a trial let's give it a go um and then during a trial, you'd have the same support as well. You'd have a customer success manager that would be more than happy to speak to your admins and your end users to get them to, to adopt. Yes, yes. Yeah, actually, that, that's quite interesting that you're, you're mentioning the, the trial because um, we, we had a, another question with regards to, uh, obviously, the, the, the cost associated with, uh, uh, with, uh, with, with on board um, and uh, Peter um, asking for, for a range, I guess, um, yeah. in, terms of, in terms of cost. So I know that um, it, it's a bit hard for you to answer um, what, you know, um, what we'd say from 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 our side is that um, we have the uh, 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 the offer for, for on board available um, on the website if people want to uh, to to take a look. There's also an associated um, offer um, with that for people who like to try um, first and uh, um, you know mm. get us sort of free free offer. To answer Peter's question, he's put um, are we talking tens, hundreds, or thousands? <laughs> um, <laughs> It's not multiple thousands. It really does depend on how big your board is. That's why I can't actually give you a, a, a reasonable cost. I would say if you're a, a board of say 10 perhaps, um, and you want to have a couple of suites so that you're able to have your meetings and perhaps do approvals, we could be looking at anything between 1500 to 2000 pounds a year for onboard and that allows you to run as many meetings as many approvals as many as e-signatures as you wish during that 12 months okay. and if you then equate that into looking at the time it takes to put that together by an administrator your costs for um, your paper and your printing and your distribution you'll probably find that you are going to make a saving and you're also going to know that you're going to be able to control your information better the security's there Plus, you've got the document library so that your board has got access to all the additional information that they didn't have before. OK, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Bob, for, for answering Peter's, uh, Peter's That's question. That's OK. <laughs> um, and, and actually going back onto this organisational buy-in um, and, you know, the fact that uh, people want to uh, some, you know, the trustee wants to, to go virtual. Once it's good and they're up for going virtual, um, somebody is asking, does this mean they should prepare to supply devices to them? Um, or um, 
Well, Onboard is available on every single platform. So it's available on um, the web. You can access it via the web and you can also access it via, by, via your iPad, your, um, what do you call them now? Phones, yeah. I'm not very good with words. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, the, you know what I mean, iPhone, that sort of thing. Yeah. Also available on Android. And that's, it's also available on the um, Kindle Kindle Fire oh, okay. from Amazon. Um, so I very much doubt there's anybody nowadays who hasn't got a, one of these. <laughs> one of these. One of these. And the app is free of charge as well. So um, I would have said that most board members would be prepared to download the free app onto their device and a device that they like to use and used to using rather than you enforcing a device onto them that they're not used to. Um, so really, no, you don't need to supply them with a separate device. A separate device no they should have theirs <laughs> um, that's great thank you bob um francesca benetti is uh, is asking whether there's a there's a way to allow comments to board papers on, on yes board? yes good question francesca um the system allows you to annotate on your board papers and the annotations are you have freehand pen so you can draw and, and whatever you want on the papers. Mm -hmm. um, you can highlight, um, you can underline, you can squiggly underline, you can actually put a blank paper onto the agenda as well. So if you have an agenda item which is a verbal agenda item, you can actually upload a blank paper so that people on the board who are attending can make notes on that verbal presentation and save them in their board book for later. You're also able to do a sticky note. And something what's good about Onboard as well is that you can share your annotations with other board members. So if there's a specific thing that you would like assistance with bringing up at the meeting, you can annotate that on your board paper and you can share it with a, another board member and say, this is what I'd like to bring up at the meeting. Would you um, back me up or would you share this with me as well? So yes, you can annotate. Super, great, thank you. Um, and, and actually we have we have um, way more questions coming in. That's, that's oh great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So thank you, thank you very much all for, for answering the question. They're very, very that's insightful. Okay. And uh, yeah, we I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll have the, the time to go through all of them. We'll try, yeah. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> Uh, another question from Stuart Bergen, um, who's asking whether you can run an AGM with this system. Um, so he's thinking 50 attendees rather than 500. Is that possible? Okay. Um, Onboard is designed really for board and board. leadership meetings. Um, if you're running an AGM and that's normally an open meeting, um, you could you could if you were. Um, having a face-to-face -face meeting, you could put it into present mode and have it available on a screen. Um, again, if you're doing a virtual um, AGM, which we possibly would be doing in times like this, and you're yeah. running it through Zoom, again, you can share your screen so that you'd be able to share your um, papers and the meeting content via that. So you wouldn't want to add on 500 attendees onto onboard. Um, I would say that would be a bit excessive and that would be rather costly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got yeah. you. Yes, yeah, yes. And uh, yeah, 500, that's uh, that's quite a lot. Uh, but I suppose, it is. <laughs> yeah, there's a feature. Yeah, like yeah. Um, and uh, another question now coming back on to security uh, mm -hmm. and data security. Um, where is the whole data stored? Is it on UK server, European, American? That's a very prominent question at the moment. We've got Brexit just around the corner yeah. and everybody's saying, OK, data sovereignty, where is this? Where is it being held? Because we all know um, that data being held in a certain country has to abide by those countries' laws. So we use Microsoft Azure. We're a Microsoft Azure partner. We use the Microsoft Azure data centers. So you can choose where you want your data to be stored. If you are a UK, you can be stored in the UK. If you are a charity and you're overseas and you want it stored in your area, we can put it in a data center in your area. So yes, it's if you're UK, it's stored in the UK. Okay, but you can ask, I suppose, when setting that up, you can have the, the choice, I guess. Yes, you yeah. can. Uh, Onboard is a global organization. We have charities and other organizations from all around the world using Onboard, um, and they can say where they would like their data stored. Okay, super. Well, great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, next question from, from Eloise Appleby. Um, she's asking whether you can use Onboard for other meetings too, management team, team leaders. 
which are being encouraged to go online during COVID or is it just set for trustees? You can use it for whoever you wish. Um, Onboard has got this functionality where um, you allocate the management of your members. So you would make you would add all your members in in one area and then you would say, OK, they're all board members, so I'm going to put them in a board group. These are all management trustees uh, or management SLT leaders. I'm going to put them in another group so you can have as many groups as you wish and you can run as many meetings on onboard as you wish. And it's designed so that um, if you create a trustee meeting, you only invite the trustees to it and only the trustees have vision of it. Then if you want to add in your management team, you can run a management team meeting at exactly the same time as your trustees meeting, add just the management team to it, and only they will see it. So there is the possibility to add as many different teams on as you wish. That's great. And um, in the other sort of reversely, um, if you're a board member um, and are, you know, a board member of several organisations, are you able to access all of these different boards um, as well? So if you're a board member on different organisations and they all use Onboard, mm. you're able to access all those organisations using one login. So you may be um, on a number of charity boards and a number of these charity boards have all got together and said, actually, we like Onboard. It's a reasonably cost for us. We works for us, does what we want. And they all start to use it. When that trustee logs on, he would log on using one log on, one password, and he would then see each charity that he is a member of displayed separately. And the information relating to that charity will only be available when he clicks into the charity that he wants to view. None of it is mixed over, none of it is muddled up. It's all kept separate for them. Kept separate. Okay, brilliant, thank you. Um, and Eloise had uh, uh, a couple more questions. Um, she, she's asking whether there are any specific features from on board that, that set it apart from other similar platforms okay one of the, the features is um, we integrate with zoom so you can mm -hmm. have um, your conference calls your virtual meetings on one platform using one device using one screen that's one of the big ones um, we are developing on board constantly it's uh, you do find that some other platforms they will develop their their portal and they won't update it and it will sit there for a couple of years not being updated we pride ourselves on listening to our customers finding out what they want and then going in and updating it so it works well for them so there's lots of things that are good about on board different to other things but i would say to you it's always good to have a look rather than just take my word for it Great. Yes, yes. And integrating on Zoom allows you to have a snazzy background. Like it yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly like you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you were on this, uh, on, on there uh, yeah. as you speak. Um, and, uh, and finally, final question from, from Eloise. Um, and, and I think it quite ties in with what you were mentioning earlier. Um, how long would you suggest for a transition implementation period? Okay, so really that does depend on the organisation that mm. we're dealing with. When you decide that you'd like to go digital and you've had a trial and that that's right for you, we would um, meet for an implementation to discuss what you would like, how you would like to start the implementation as well. And we would, um, to put it bluntly, we'd hold your hand for as long as you wish. So if you wanted to start off with just having your meetings on, on board, then we would train you and your um, end users on how to use the meetings. And then if you decide, right, okay, we're gonna use the uh, voting process and to be able to do signatures, and you want to then um, do a phase two and introduce that in phase two, we would be there to hold your hand to introduce it into phase two as well. It, it's different for every organization. There are some organizations that you think, okay, so I think this might be a long process for adoption and training. And they're the ones that suddenly pick it up and say after the first meeting, great, we don't need you anymore. That We've got it done. Everybody's adopted it and love it. And then there are some who constantly have issues where people don't like using an iPad and, you know, we just have to train them into using a digital process for, they, for them to realize how easy it is. So again, it's something we would discuss with you. Hold your hand for as long as you wish. We're always there. Whenever you're um, on a contract with Onboard, we're always at the end of the line. So 
we could be training and carrying out the process for 12 months for you if needs be. <laughs> if needs be. If yeah. Needs be. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's great. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. Um, another quick question from from Caroline um, asking whether on board is linked to board effect. No, no. We um, our parent company is called Passageways um, and on board is an independent um, board portal. Okay, okay, it's clear. So that uh, we, we made the, the, the clarification there. Um, and uh, and finally, um, Beverly was asking about um, a live demo. Um, and actually, yep. um, yes, so so um, we think there's going to be a, a, a live demo. We'll be uh, reverting to, to everybody within uh, uh, the, the, the from you know the participant um, about the exact date for for a live demo. But there's there's one um, that is planned by the the lovely onboard teams and you'll be all informed in due course um yep. so yeah yep. beverly can also contact us direct and we would be able to do a live demo for her uh, at a time that suits her as well if that's how, any help absolutely yes so yeah. um so yeah beverly you'll be able to uh, uh to get access to a live demo quite soon um and uh, and obviously um for for all of those of you that um are keen to um to find out a bit more uh, there's uh, the uh, um listing on, on the uh, charity digital exchange um where, where there are more details about that and you you have a bit more um information uh, about the free the free trial as well um if you're not um, if you're not sure um i guess uh, at the moment, we have no um, no other um, open questions. Um, I just wanted to um, obviously uh, say that there's a, um, we, we had received a, another comment um, from sorry I don't, I don't remember her name, but uh, uh, who'd said that you know she had uh, the feeling at the moment that the board the agenda was was a bit too rigid uh, the reports were too detailed and and being sent too close to the to the meetings. Mm -hmm. The kind of of feedback you're 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 hearing um, as well from um, for, from some organisation you're speaking to. Some organisations, because the current process we're in, the current situation we're in, things are changing constantly. Mm. Um, I deal a lot with education, and education has been thrown up, shaken around, and landed on the floor numerous times they have to get themselves picked up so i know for a fact that their meetings have had to change constantly and they have had to have a rigid agenda to stick to to ensure mm -hmm. that they're covering everything that's needed during covid um it's that's a, quite a tricky one to answer to be honest with you because um onboard is not designed to sort out your agenda um, as such, you, you do need to have a rigid agenda to ensure that you're complying with um, your governance regulations. So there are certain things that you need to have, certain things you need to do. So yes, there is the rigidity there. Um, the distribution of papers, um, I can say that I have been in a position where I have been the person that has had to do the distribution of mm. papers. I've had to look after the governance of an organisation. And that really is down to the individual to turn around and say to the person, that paper's too late for this meeting. Our papers are published five days prior to the meeting to give our board access to be able to prepare. I'm sorry, I'm not publishing it. Um, and you, you, I shouldn't really say that, but you do need to, you, you need to put your foot down because, um, you know, the meeting published, the, the, the schedule of meetings have probably been published 12 months in advance or six months in advance. So everybody knows when that meeting is to take place. And our trustees are important, busy people. We can't expect them to suddenly pick up a report a day before the meeting and then sit down to read it. And it's like a couple of pages long. It doesn't sound a lot, but it's a lot for them to take in when they've already received a lot of papers for that meeting. Yeah. So we need to bear in mind that a lot of our trustees are volunteers and we want them to be able to do the best they can. So we need to make sure that we do the best for them as we can. Absolutely. Um, uh, and you say it is is really about um, understanding everybody's um, need and, and expectations and having that conversation. Sure. Um, so so that, you know, it, it works yeah. much better and the, the organisation is. It's yeah, more... it's all about collaboration yeah. and, and onboard helps with collaboration as well. Mm -hmm. So it's all about talking to each other, making sure that your board are aware what's going on and giving your board a voice to the people mm -hmm. who are creating these papers to say, look, mm -hmm. we can't prepare for a meeting when you publish a paper day in advance we can't do it absolutely um well i mean 
yes, that's, um, I think it's been very insightful. Thank you. Thank you very much again, um, Bob, for, uh, for spending the time with us and uh, talking us through, um, you know, the, the different challenges um, that were uh, uh, existing for, for many organisations, I suppose, in terms of how, how to, to gain more, um, you know, efficiency um, when going digital for, for the board meeting. So thank you very much for that. And uh, yeah, and uh, thank you all so much for for listening as well. Um, thank you for all the questions you've been you've been putting through. Um, we will be sending out a recording of the webinar along with some additional resources um, within the next few days, next week um, by email. So you'll receive all of that. Uh, we will upload that onto the website. So um, if you have any colleagues that would like to uh, to have a look as well, um, they'll be very welcome to, to tune in in their own time uh, and access the webinar on, on the website. Um, if um, we can have the slides, because obviously, uh, you know, we almost near, you know, near the end of the year, but we still have quite a few webinars uh, to go through. So in a couple of weeks time, we will have uh, another webinar with the lovely uh, staff from National Cybersecurity Center. Uh, Cub Levin Davis, for those of you who know him, uh, will be um, having a, a, a brilliant presentation uh, about cybersecurity on the 19th of November. And um, on the Tuesday, this is our podcast release date, and we will have uh, one of our latest uh, conference releases. So March conference, you know, it seems so, such a long time away, uh, but we had great sessions there. Uh, we recorded them all and uh, we are releasing them as podcasts. So uh, the next release will be everything you need to know about creating killer content. Uh, and that's going to be released on November the 10th. Um, we would like to thank you all for, for, for staying, for enjoying the, the presentation. Uh, we'd love to get your feedback about today. Um, so my colleague uh, will be sending you an email after, right after the webinar. Um, and we look forward to receiving your feedback, your thoughts, what you thought about uh, the webinar and the presentation um, so that we know um, if what we are doing is right and, and how we can uh, always improve to, uh, to bring the best possible uh, content to you because uh, uh, that's the most important. Um, so yeah, thank you again. Thank you again, Bob, uh, for spending the time with us. Uh, we just uh, three minutes away thank from you. 2 p.m. So <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you all and have a lovely afternoon and see you very soon. <laughs>